Hello and welcome to another tutorial video from the events calendar. My name is James and in this video we are going to be talking about our core plugins, the events calendar and event tickets. By the end of this video you will know how to create an event and sell tickets to that event right from your website. So let's get started. The first thing you'll need to do of course is install and activate the events calendar plugin. This can be done from our website, theeventscalendar.com. You can download the plugin there and install it into your WordPress dashboard. You can also simply search for the plugins in the plugin section. Both of our free plugins, the events calendar and event tickets can be found in the WordPress repository. As you can see, I've already installed and activated, but if you haven't, you can click install, wait a few seconds and then click activate. Once you've done that, you'll notice we have a new option over here called events. This is where we will find our event related settings. And this is where we can view our events and add new events. We can add a venue and an organizer, all sorts of stuff. And we're going to get into all that. So first thing we're going to do, of course, is create an event. To do that, there's a few different ways we can go about adding a new event. We can come over here to events and click add new. We can come up over here to events and click add event. We can even come up here to new and choose event. Lots of different ways. They all lead to the same place, which is a new event editor. Now, if you've used WordPress before, this will look pretty familiar to you. It's basically the same as a new post or a new page editor with a couple event related differences. So first thing we'll do is give our event a name. Let's call this Whiskey Friday. That sounds like a fun event. And we'll say this event takes place on a Friday, of course. And let's say, oh, after after people get off work, you know, let's say 6 p.m. And uh, maybe we'll say this goes until 8 p.m. And then we'll add a description. Come hang out and drink some fine whiskey. We'll add a price. Now, it's important to know that this is not an actual ticket. We'll get into tickets later. This is just going to display a price so that people will know what to expect to pay at the door. Later, when we install and activate event tickets, we'll actually be able to add a ticket to this event that people can purchase right here on the website. Um, organizer and venue, we'll actually get to that in a minute. Add event website, you can add a link here. If your event exists somewhere else, maybe it's on Eventbrite or it's a Facebook event or meetup.com, something like that, and you want to just add a link to that, uh, you can do that right here. So I'll just make up a link. Let's say it's on eventbrite.com slash event slash, I don't know how they do events there. That looks good. And over here, you'll notice we have the option to add a featured image, just like a post or a page. You can select from your existing media library, of course, or you can upload a brand new file. I'm just going to go ahead and pick a random image. Let's go ahead and throw that in there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click Publish. And let's view the event. So here we go. We have a pretty basic event. Again, it looks a lot like a post. We have the title. We have a description. Um, it tells us when the event is. We can see that it's $5. We can even add it to our Google Calendar, or we can just export an iCal file that we can do whatever we want to with. Let's go ahead and go back in and edit the event. I want to show you something. You'll notice there was no featured image there, even though we added one. If you would like that featured image to show up here, we can simply find a plus sign. Let's see, where do we want it? Let's just click it down here. And I'm going to search for featured image. There we go. Boom. Maybe we want to move it up a little bit. Let's click these arrows. Let's see how far up we can go with it. Just all the way to the top. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. Now every theme is going to display this information a little bit differently, but for the most part, you should get a pretty consistent experience. Let's take a look at the events page, our calendar page. So these are all the random events that our sandbox threw in there. And you'll notice that our event automatically got added to the list in the right place. It takes place on June 25th. So there's an event here on the 24th. There's another one on the, on the 30th. So this is right in between those events. It automatically added our event to the event list in the appropriate place based on the date that the event is occurring. And you can see we have, this is the list view, which is the default, but we also have a month view which looks like a calendar. Where's our event? Friday, there it is, Whiskey Friday. You can see when we hover over it, we get a nice little tooltip card there. 
And then there's also day view. So we can skip ahead to our event that we just created. See what that looks like. There it is. Now, if we go back to our dashboard, I'm going to go to events, settings. And I want to show you something. You noticed earlier when we looked at our calendar page, the default view was a list view. If we wanted to change that, we could come into settings, go to display. And for the default view, we could choose month. That's the, the calendar view. There's also day view, of course. So if we save this, and now if we go look at our events page, we'll see that the default is a calendar instead of a list. Now let's talk about venues and organizers. I mentioned earlier that we can add those from the dashboard and then add them to our event. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll hop back on over to our dashboard, go to events and venues. We can click add new. And we can give our venue a title, a description, an address, phone number, and website, and a featured image. And then we can click Publish. Similarly, we can go to Events Organizers, click Add New, give it a name, description, a phone number, website, and email, and of course, a featured image. Once we've done that, we can add these venues or organizers to an event that we're creating. So you can see we already have some organizers added, and we have some venues added. So let's go on back to our event, Whiskey Friday, and we'll edit it. And we'll scroll down here to the organizer and venue section. For organizer, we can, let's go with local music promoters. And for a venue, just pick jazz music stage. I'm going to update and we'll see what this looks like on the front end. Okay, so we have our event just like we did before, but now we have a organizer and a venue. So people can click on Google Map to navigate there, or they can just take the address right here. We got a website for the organizer, contact information, and a map. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's talk about tickets now. Right now we have a price listed on our event, but we can't actually purchase a ticket to this. This is just saying, hey, when you show up at the door, bring $5. But what if we want to actually add a ticket to this event that our customers could purchase? Well, to do that, we'll need to install event tickets. This can be done again by downloading the plugin from our website, theeventscounter.com, or simply go to plugins, add new, and search for event tickets. Install and activate it. And once we do that, you'll notice we have another tab in our event settings section called tickets. Now, in order to actually add a ticket, you will need to have some sort of e-commerce solution enabled. Now, the only one that is supported by event tickets is our own e-commerce solution called Tribe Commerce, which will be renamed to Ticket Commerce pretty soon. So to enable that, we can go to the tickets tab, scroll down and enable Tribe Commerce. Um, you want to throw in your PayPal address here, and you want to take these steps to actually set it up correctly. Um, and once you've done these steps, you can click yes. Then you can enable sandbox if you just want to do some testing. And then make sure to turn that off before you go live. And you can choose a page to redirect people to after they've made a purchase, confirmation email, sender address, et cetera, et cetera. And then click save. Once you've done that, we will be able to add tickets to our events. Now, if you want to use something other than PayPal, you can use an e-commerce solution called WooCommerce, but that is only supported by our pro plugin, Events Tickets Plus. So just keep that in mind. If you want to have a little bit more of a robust e-commerce solution like WooCommerce or easy digital downloads, you will need to upgrade to Event Tickets Plus. But the free plugin Event Tickets will work just fine with Tribe Commerce if you're okay with using PayPal. So go ahead and set up your Tribe Commerce and your PayPal settings, and then we'll go ahead and hop on over to our event and add a ticket to our event. Okay, so let's go back to our event, Whiskey Friday, and I went ahead and set up my Tribe Commerce and PayPal settings off camera. So now, assuming I did that correctly, we should see a tickets block in here. And if we don't, we can just simply click the plus sign, click on tickets, and now you'll see there are no tickets yet. Let's add a ticket. So the ticket type, well, I'm just going to call this going. 
we'll make it five dollars for ticket capacity i'm just going to leave a blank for unlimited you could put in 10 if you only want to sell 10 tickets to this event and the duration you know typically it'll go on sale now and it'll stop being available for sale when the event starts of course and so i'll just make this a very simple ticket five dollars going unlimited and i'll hit create ticket and then i'll come up here and click update and let's go view this event all right check it out we now have a ticket block i can purchase as many tickets as i want assuming unlimited and i can click on get tickets and this will take me through a paypal checkout process very cool so that's pretty much it as far as uh, creating events and tickets goes let's say we wanted to have just an rsvp option here not an official ticket that collects money but just sort of an rsvp option that's, that people can choose to say yeah i'm coming and i'm bringing two guests and let's go ahead and edit the event here and we'll scroll down and we're going to click the plus sign and choose rsvp very similar to creating a ticket we'll call this you know rsvp and uh the the duration and the time and all that we'll create the rsvp hit update and check out the front end and here you can see i can just say i'm going number of guests three finish so that's just a little bit more of an informal sort of way to track attendees and uh, let people let you know that they're coming so i did think it'd be cool to take just a quick minute to talk about some of the features available in our premium plugins so far everything that we've done today can be done with our free plugins the event calendar and event tickets but we also have the event calendar pro and event tickets plus so with the events calendar pro you'll notice that we do offer premium support we also have some additional calendar views so you notice before we had month view list view and day view with pro there's a couple more views in there there's a photo view there's a brand new summary view we have recurring events you can create uh, easily create recurring events with pro um, so if you have an event that takes place you know every friday uh, you could use the recurring events feature elementor integration Ele elementor is very popular a lot of people use that uh, you can add some custom fields there's some advanced widget options and then with events ticket plus we also have some pretty cool premium features premium support of course your ticket will include a qr code on it that can be scanned at the door if you download our android or ios app again some advanced widgets you can share stock so if you have three different tickets for one event you can choose to have a total of 15 tickets sold among all three of those tickets so somebody could buy 14 of one ticket type someone else buys one of the other and that's it nobody else can buy any more tickets and probably the most notable improvement with event tickets plus is that you can use woocommerce which really opens up your options as far as payment gateways go so if you don't want to use paypal you want to use stripe or authorize.net you can do that with woocommerce if you're using event tickets plus so i hope you found this tutorial useful and i look forward to seeing you guys in the next one thanks for watching